Welcome to Board Ghost, a story broadcast with games as the engine. If living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? We believe you're out hungry for stories for shared experience can't see you, can't hear you, yet we will play for you. This night's offering is Children of the Fall. Children of the Fall is a recently released game or or game that's about to be released uh, via an Indiegogo campaign. It was designed by Gareth H. Graham, and as of the release of this first episode, you can go and I think catch the last day of the Indiegogo campaign for Children of the Fall. And Gareth has kindly made a copy of it available to us early so that we can get a play on it. And because his game company is Frenzy Kitty Games. He's out of uh, South Africa. All right. So Children of the Fall is a post-apocalyptic, you are kids trying to survive the end times game. Before we get into more about that game, our humble players, myself, John Holt, with me. Here's Ken Bree. And our guest. I am Christopher McFarland. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, the hook, this is the before the first session is, and I'll, I'll just read this out because it says to in the thing. Who knows? Children of the Fall is a game about kids joining together and surviving in a broken world. The grown-ups have all gone mad. They are violent, vicious, and savage, hell-bent on killing and destroying everything that isn't one of them. They are what we call the Fallen. This is the fate that awaits us all one day when we are between the ages of 16 and 18. We play as the survivors living through this apocalypse as it is unfolding. Each of us will take the, on the role of one of these Children of the Fallen, who are desperately trying to survive and forge a life amongst the chaos, and we will each play our characters similar to an actor playing a character in a film, saying what they say, describing what they do. Children of the Fall is a game of collaborative storytelling. There is no winning or losing. The prize is to tell a rich and dramatic story together. We take turns directing the story and framing scenes. The game uses a simple engine that allows us to add plot twists to the story as we go, even when it's not our turn to frame the scene. At the start of each game session, we will select a mission to play. This mission will help start us off each session with a goal and some variables that make each game unique and exciting. So I'll put up a rules primer just kind of briefly fleshing out that outline uh, so you can go check that out if you want to learn more about how we're generating the story playing this game note on tone it's pretty dark like ken was saying the protagonists are kids and they're all like teen or preteen, 12 to 16 years old as well you know x card is out and if any of us feel like we're getting into stuff that's too dark for any of us so that's all good got a pretty well fleshed out world and structure's not too crazy uh, so we'll get into it why don't we start we've we've already done our sort of session zero setup so we'll run through that real quick I'll, I'll pull up that outline for session zero which is sort of setup uh, we initially have determined the time since the fall it's been about two months since things have Very all fallen recent. apart yeah um, which means that some of us have possibly seen older kids go over to the dark side yeah. and we have fallen like we we our supplies are not totally running low but like we're thinking more about projects towards long-term survival versus just immediate like scavenging and, and scraping by uh why don't we will go through our characters real quick and kind of go through our world and then get into our our first set of scenes which will be our character introduction vignette so um kim why don't you start off who who's your character sure uh, i'm playing as the martyr uh that is sort of my archetype my character is jacques he is 15 Jacques uh, is sort of a, a goth kid. Uh, he's very, very, very thin uh, legs and arms uh, and torso. He wears these sort of suspenders and these black shorts that sort of go down to his knees. He has a long nose and long neck. He sort of looks bird-like. In fact, he's very pale skinned. Uh, he has this white blonde hair that he sort of has greased up into this sort of faux hawk rooster comb uh, he also uh, carries around a, a wallet chain, uh, and he wears a cat collar, like a house cat collar, around his neck that has a medallion on it that says the name or has the name Jacques. Right, and how old is he? Jacques is 15. Thanks for reminding to ask me that. Okay. I have some character questions here, which sort of help fill out who Jacques is. 
which uh, since he's the martyr, he's very much sort of lost hope to some degree. He's almost uh, uh, n- not nihilistic per se, but fatalistic. He's, he's very ready for death or he knows that he's going to die and, and has sort of accepted that. The, the questions, though, are why is the tribe something he is actually willing to die for? And I think it is, the reason is that he helped found it, who is one of the sort of the founding members of bringing people together here, bringing children together. The you know, next question is, what have you lost that has that gave you a reason to live previously? Uh, and that was his big, close, extended family. Uh, he saw all of them turn and or be killed. And then lastly, what scares you the most? And while and this uh, this is sort of innocuous, I kind of still like it because it is a kid thing. Swimming. He's really, really afraid of swimming, like just being submerged in water and not knowing what's beneath him. Um, I think that's very scary for him. Um, and that's Jacques. What are Jacques' remnant? What is his? Oh, yes. The remnant is the cat collar that he wears. One could assume it is from his big extended family, maybe a beloved pet or something like that. Cool. Uh, Chris, why don't you take it away? Who are you playing? Absolutely. I'm playing Kelvin. He's a little guy. He's 12 years old, small, thick glasses. He was left at a water park, and he still wears his uh, sort of short swimming trunks. Uh, He's acquired an army jacket a little too large for him, some tennies that don't quite fit so well, uh, a little big and floppy. He's got a sun visor and an ID bracelet. Character question includes, how did I end up in this tribe? Uh, As I said, I was waiting for my dad at the swim park, and he never came back. I was with a security guard who turned, um, but I managed to get into a bathroom and survive that. What have I lost? Now, as as the innocent, I should say, the the archetype Kelvin is, is the innocent. I think that he still believes that some of his family exists out there somewhere. His dad was a doctor. I think maybe he's convinced that his dad is finding a cure. But he has lost his stuff, and uh, one of the things that he most misses is his favorite slingshot. His fear, though, is that his dad won't come back and, and, and save me. And for the remnant, I have a little fish in a plastic baggie that they were giving out at the, uh, at the swim park. So I'm, I'm hanging on to that. Does the fish have a name? Yeah, it's Choocher. Choocher. Love it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So I am playing Penny. She is 15. She is a she's the hunter. So she is the one who puts her neck on the line to forge and gather food for the tribe. She's the one who's out there the most, possibly the most capable, but also the most vulnerable of the group because of that. So she's rangy, strong, like basically she is a burgeoning track star. That's where that was her path and her passion before uh, the fall. So she wears a baseball cap, jeans, and an old windbreaker and uh, over a tank top. She carries a like a pretty big spear that she's very proficient with that the blade on the end is a pair is from a pair of scissors and the handle is like a shaved down or carved down wooden handle possibly from a mop or mm-hmm. broom of some sort. She kind of wry, slow fuse, quiet maybe. She's got a shock of close cropped red hair. She's just pretty agile and sure of herself for the most part. Why is she able to do this? Again, sporty. She was a track and soccer, just peak physical physical condition. That was her passion. That's what she really was into. That's what she was honing. That's what everything was focused on and sort of personal growth in that area. Why does she hate her role? She feels responsible for the others who rely on her prowess. So she hates the fact that it that she isn't just striving to be her like to be her own best self. She has to she has to she is taking on the burden of caring for other people. And so that's sort of she feels put upon, but I think it's somewhat self-imposed. So what does she care more about uh, care about more than anything? Those moments, those quiet vigils in, of the hunt and the thrill of the chase, like those moments when she is, it's her and her quarry, that's what she now lives for. It's like a, it's the, she doesn't get trophies in the little golden pedestal sense anymore. They're, her trophies are what she catches. What would happen to the tribe without you? Uh, she believes that the tribe would starve without her. That's that's her contention. Uh, what is she afraid of? She's afraid of being injured and in turn being a burden to the tribe. That's her biggest worry, that she would become burdensome. Her remnant, she carries an old iPod Nano that's long since lost charge. And when she just needs to zone out, she puts in the headphones and kind of get, that's her that's her stalking mode. 
she puts those in. They were a gift from her parents on her 15th birthday, shortly before the fall. Uh, so relationships, Ken, what, why don't we start with Jacques' relationships? Sure. One of them is I'm friendly towards Kelvin. I think that I have a certain friendly attitude towards him for whatever reason, even though I'm not particularly a friendly person. I'm also quite envious of Penny's and her status amongst the tribe. Uh, so I have here uh, that I trust Penny with my life. I think he's seen her proficiency, he's glommed onto that. Uh, and I think that he's a little scared of Jacques. I think he didn't encounter a lot of alt kids in his sort of sheltered <laughs> existence. This sort of pale bird-like creature that has brought them all to a graveyard is uh, <laughs> is a little unsettling to Kelvin. Penny is friendly towards Kelvin. Kind of like Kelvin is probably one of the older kids who is still pretty young. So can verbalize and carry on conversation has a personality that is like more than just I'm hungry or whatever. She sees potential, but also like he's kind of hopeful and like a breath of fresh air in this like harsh place. Mm. So she she's pretty friendly towards him in that. Like even though again, like everybody in this tribe kind of relies on her and she's good with that. With him though, she feels like she kind of gets something from their interaction. So she's friendly towards that. She's scared of Jock. Not so much for like reasons of being sheltered but more that she understands like they're of the same age she understands her relationship to like the younger mouths to like the baby to the kids as she mm -hmm, sees them mm -hmm. but this is like a peer who the others listen to and respect and she's not a leader per se but she's not sure what leadership under Jacques is would be like yeah if they were like when it comes to it and she's, she's possibly afraid of that that tension and so he's sort of he's unknown to her he's mm -hmm. so it's it's a different sort of other than than maybe Kelvin's fear of Jacques mm -hmm. all right so those are those are our relationships those are our characters so we have built a haven. We live in a cemetery. We don't. We haven't really named our tribe yet. We'll get. We'll get to that at some point, maybe in this. But it's a loose group of people. We live in a cemetery in sort of the outskirts of Indianapolis, or a, yep. a rural city, or a city in a major rural state in the U.S. And so we are kind of between the large structures that are full of ravening adults and the more rural spread out countryside we, but we live inside of a cemetery flowing past it is an old like river way that barges were pulled along or something back when that was still happening and maybe it was buried at one point and has since like with flooding and lack of sump pump maintenance has once again opened up and so that's our source of fresh water and maybe occasional supplies if flotsam tends mm -hmm. to come down yeah. there just outside of the cemetery along the main road we've set up some of the hearses that we use as sort of like secondary shelters and like lookout vantages because they they offer some protection. There's like shells within shells. They have curtains you can draw so you can kind of peek. They've got coffins you can get inside to hide. They they offer some relief. And then between the town or between the city and our graveyard cemetery is a super sales department store. Giant big box store that's sort of local to this Midwestern area, this band. And it is been for a while our main source of supplies and gear that we we don't have we don't venture too far into the city probably this is this is our hub for supplies and has at least recently been maybe somewhat safe so our tribe again we haven't really named our tribe there are a, maybe a, a 13 of us so there's the three of us and a 10 others mm -hmm. they're all pretty young there's maybe one baby and then like an infant mm -hmm. and then seven to 11 year olds yep. it's not a big tribe but it's not a small one it's not very yeah. strong though yeah. mm -hmm. in fact we're the three of us are kind of like kind of it for the adults in the room as it were <laughs> yeah <laughs> Our food, our, our shortage, we're a thing that we're sort of lowest on is food. That's something that that's our daily struggle to to keep our mouths fed. Because, again, we, we don't have a lot of capable hands. We just kind of have to make do with uh, us adults doing the scavenging or, you know, us older kids. Um, surplus, we have tons of shelter, tons of building material and tools, whether it's superstition or just isolation. All the things that are here at the cemetery, like, are, we have a supply of. 
uh, we have it in spades, spades and spades. We have tons of tools. <laughs> yep. That, uh, we have possibly like a digging, like yeah, a like a backhoe that we could we could fuel up if we needed to, like siphon gas off from the hearses or something. Mm-hmm. Like we have access to these materials in the shelter and building materials that you know are there to erect more mausoleums or whatever. But repair the fence that's yeah. all around the entire place. That's a big reason we're here. Is that there's a tall spiky metal fence that encloses the entire place so we have some protection not easy to climb over without hurting yourself so immediately our threats there's we're living in this part of the midwest where there are pretty like rampant tornadoes (laughs) and we're we're entering the height of the season so that's kind of a big danger right now is the these tornadoes and the fact that not you know we have shelter that's fine but we're kind of out in the open and more than anything it, it upsets the things around us it makes it drives the crazy ravening glossy-eyed, smiling, maniacal, bloodthirsty human adults out of the city and sort of gets them worked up and moving yeah, around. The diaspora it sort of spreads yeah. them all around. And then uh, it also possibly adds tension where the sort of rural tribes that may be better armed and better equipped than us that we kind of avoid may come looking for us to as easy easy pickings for supplies and and things to bolster their own shelter. Long term, we may not have to deal with this, but like I was mentioning, the heavily supplied rural tribes are possibly our larger threat. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's one of the big tensions. So as they need more resources, they'll be coming more closer to town. Right. right. They'll be sort of, and we're on the outskirts of town, so it sort of is. It's it's like we're, we're just right in their part. path. Yeah. 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 Um, so our mission before we get into sort of our character introduction vignettes. Our mission is to build a tornado shelter and supply it. So so fortify our spot so that we can survive the upcoming tornado season and all the things that that would bring. Um, why do we need to complete it? These tornadoes are imminent and, you know, they've, they've already started causing some destruction and already made it kind of hard for us to forge. Like there are already like more roving bands of fallen just outside of the city yep. that are making it hard for us to forge where we normally forge and hunt. The obstacle right now is this lack of food and fuel. Like, again, we haven't been able to forge possibly out of the fuel that we did have in this latest tornado hit. Like, something happened. We're, we're low on the some of the supplies that we would need to to really activate our, sh- our shelter. So how long do we have to complete it? Again, it's tornadoes. They're pretty dangerous and often. So I don't know. They, they're they're going to strike without too much warning. So within the next couple of weeks, we're, we're getting to the heart of tornado and, and it's not like we have meteorologists anymore. Right. We don't have any more early warning systems. Like right. these things right. are just showing up right. and who knows, maybe we're even hearing buildings collapsing, echoes of that type yeah, of thing. Totally. Like it's really, it, it, right. it's a bad still situation. Still some fi- like fires. Could yeah, still fires, exactly. We, like entire, we like see suburban neighborhoods, one gets leveled, gas goes up, the whole thing yep. just burns. We just see it on the horizon for nights and nights mm-hmm. just burning. Why do we want to do this? Why are we in this position? Like why would we want to follow through on this project? I'd say we've kind of noted that we're, we're our philosophy is not so much like survival of the fittest like cast out the weakest mouths we are maybe inclusive to a fault yeah so we're sort of like a weak tribe who is just trying to do the best they can and keep everybody healthy happy and alive alive being the top of that list <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a i'm i'm so interested to get into it because i do feel like there's this this fatalism that under sort of cuts it as well which is like how long are we going to be able to actually do this like we're right. just sort of it's almost like we're not here to, I guess we are here to comfort one another to some degree, but not really, I don't know, not really. I yeah, we're going to go into our character introductions. Again, this will be like a detailing where our character was the first time they realized the world as we know it. Bang, start pistol. Penny's off. Her hair tight in a bun to the back of her head. She's drafting on the girl from Medham High. She knows, like, this is it. Like, there's a reason she's. this is her first leg on varsity. She's going to show them, like, why she's here. And she's just... They're coming around. They're doing this as the full length of the track. So she's kind of by her time. She sees like she sees the that her the person in front of her is starting to get winded. And she knows this is her time. And she comes around and smiles as she just turns on the heat. Just boom. Just full gas and is strides ahead of everyone else. Just going. And is like just lost in it, smiling, arms up. And 
hears a scream and looks back as an adult in in the uniform, one of the referees, just tackles the girl in second place behind her, and they go sprawling, and she sees him smashing her head into the ground. And still kind of like running, she stops and skids, gravel flies, as she watches the adults in the stands start pouring onto the field and just like tearing apart the fence between like scramming at it, climbing over this chain link fence, leaping out and chasing the, all the other track kids, scattering. The coach of one of the teams seems to still have his wits about him as he like fends them off and is just torn limb from limb. And she grabs the hand of one of her teammates and they they start running off, do a like a nice long tall leap to get to the top of a fence and her climbing and she's like come on and she looks down and her her friend is pulled down into the horde and she gets over the fence and looks back as they like start reaching and climbing towards her and she turns to the woods and just runs and disappears into the woods i think uh, across town on that day jacques was at family dinner that his family always has every week i mean big extended family everybody goes to grandma's house Jock has been sneaking cigarettes now for the past sort of like six months, eight months or so. So the burble of the family, they like to put music on. It's usually Frank Sinatra, you know, that sort of 50s sort of stuff sort of wafting through the air of the evening. He's by himself petting this this cat that his grandma owns uh, and his family's talking and talking. And he's sort of puffing on a cigarette in the backyard, uh, keeping a lookout to make sure that no one's coming out to maybe call him to dinner. The music is, I think, just stopped. Like it, it like something stops the music. Like there's like a, a tumble and everyone's like, whoa! Like there's this sort of like just exclamation of surprise by the people inside. Uh, Jacques sort of uh, smiles, thinking that maybe uh, his siblings are fighting again. They're probably wrestling again and maybe they've knocked over the radio he sort of wants to see that and he sort of is sneaking up uh to sort of like peek into the window from the backyard and i think that that's when uh he sort of hears it's there it's it's not even any bellowing or screaming it's just crashing furniture more uh, cutlery and plates it, it's almost as if the, everyone's in a fight inside and as he's looking in he uh, is is holding the cat in one hand. He's seeing his his parents, his grandparents. They are eating his siblings. They have they are ripping their chests open, taking out their ribs, and just shoving this stuff into their mouths. He is freaking out, staring there, transfixed. It's at that point that he realizes that there's smoke that's starting to come billowing out from inside as well. It looks like in all the tumult, the, of course, we have a a fire in the chimney every, you know, every time we get together. And this fire is starting to spread throughout the house. Smoke is starting to pour out and, and it's just turning into this chaos. He's sort of stumbling backwards and he ends up in the backyard as he's stumbling backward with his grandma and she's coming after him and all he can think to do is throw this cat at her. And it starts clawing her eyes and she sort of tears it off and comes after him and he gets into a physical life or death altercation with his grandmother. She's attempting to rip his neck out with her teeth and he finally, in this tumult, crunches her head with a nearby brick a few times to get her off of him. The cat is crushed underneath her and as this house is on fire behind him, he All he thinks to do is to grab this cat's corpse and run off into the neighborhood. Later on, after he's eaten the cat, he puts on its necklace, its collar, and doesn't go by his old name anymore. He goes by Jacques. Kelvin has been waiting for his dad at the water park, and his dad is not showing up, and uh, Kelvin tends to get sick to his stomach, uh, actually when he's visiting his dad in general, but but specifically when his dad uh, doesn't show up places. And so a nice security lady has uh, taken him in to the station there, and he's using the bathroom, and all of a sudden she starts knocking on the door. And he says, oh, well, wait, wait, you know, wait a second, wait a second, I'm just going to the bathroom. And she starts knocking harder, and he's about to open the door for her, pulls up his pants. She starts screaming. She starts just, just screaming and just, 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 you know, cursing at him. These horrible, horrible phrases. 
he immediately pulls back from the door. The, 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 the slamming intensifies, it intensifies, and he's there who knows how long, covering his ears, wets himself. This pounding and the screaming goes on for hours until suddenly with one heavy thud, it stops. He waits there in his piss, in his tears, and there's no more noise. And eventually he opens the door to find that she has been uh, the security guard, the nice security lady, has been beating her head against the door uh, and has just splattered it open just like a watermelon. He has his uh, little little fish with him, little choocher in his bag that he picks up and he starts wandering around the park. And it's been long enough now that this is not an active death scene, but there are bodies everywhere. There, there are bodies in the lazy in, river, in the in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bo- bodies circling <laughs> the, the lazy river. Bodies hanging from broken pieces of uh, water slide. And he hears some screaming from out in the parking lot. And he he's looking for his dad, so he goes out there. Maybe maybe his dad's out there. Maybe he's with the car. And he sees a yellow school bus being attacked by a number of parents. Someone waves for him to come, and he does. He runs for the bus, he jumps on, and the bus drives off. So now we're going to begin our scenes. So this is the first act. We're each going to have one scene in each act. So I'll be the active player. You guys will be reactive. Sure. I'll frame the scene. I'll say you guys are both in the scene in this one. This is sort of like a scout Mm -hmm. slash supply run where I'm pretty nervous to have so many hands on a run. Mm -hmm. But we need we're we're trying to just like knock it all out. We want to get as many supplies as we can. There's we actually brought an 11 year old with us too, uh, Gregor. He doesn't speak very good English, Gregor, Mm -hmm. but he's a nice kid. He's he's pretty strong, so he can carry a lot. He's kind of big for his age, Mm -hmm. but he's not very fast. But we need we need hands in this mission. There's a direct route. Like we could take the road directly to Super Sales, but I've guided us through the woods. And so we kind of come around behind Super Sales mm. because that's to me, that's the safer route. That's the safer way to go. So we're now standing just at the edge of the woods near where it clears and there's a little descent to some pavement. And then you see the loading bays at the back of Super Sales. And I, I, we can't see any fallen yet. And I'm, again, I'm very nervous. Like, I know that we needed hands. I wasn't too comfortable. I, I, I am, had weighed, like, do I just do this myself and get what I can? Or do we just need a lot? We were running too low. We had to hunker down for a while from the last run. And, like, is, we're just going to get as much as we can and move us. So crouching down at the edge of the woods, Penny, Penny looks back to you all and says, Okay. This is going to be the most dangerous part. This is not the most dangerous part. I thought there was, these woods would be crawling with, with them. No, they, st- they stuck to the these roads. woods aren't crawling. No, yeah, they, they tend to, unless they chase you into the woods, like they, they tend to stay out of the woods for the most part. Um, at least that's what I found. Unless they chase you, they'll, they'll usually kind of go back to houses and places that they, I guess, know. I don't know. They like to be inside when it rains. You sure know a lot about them. Got to. I, I've been watching them for a while. Should, should we have left the little ones alone? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Sally and them can take care of the baby, but... Right. They, they got to grow up sometime. Well, they're, they're little kids. I don't know. How, they're no more adults. So we're the oldest ones, so they're not kids anymore. They're middle-aged. I, I just think we should do this fast so we can get back to them. All right. I, I've scouted long enough, and I feel like the coast is clear. I motion for you guys to start moving forward and say, just just stay low, move quick, get to that loading bay, go right to that ramp right there. That's where you want to be. Just hide hide on but the side of that ramp. I'll be fast enough to, like, catch up to you in case something goes wrong. Come on, Kelvin. I won't leave your side. Um, I reach out to take your hand. Uh, I tentatively uh, take your hand. Listen to Penny. She knows what she's doing. Okay, okay. She does. I crouch down and start scurrying out by going, not trying to drag Kelvin. I'm actually going Kelvin. Kelvin's actually pretty fast. Yeah. He's a little, he's a little scrappy guy. I mean, his shoes are a little floppy, but I think he can move, he can move <laughs> quick and quiet. Yeah, and Gregor just kind of plods right behind you guys. Yeah. Like for him, you're kind of like medium pace. Is uh, he's a little brisk for him? So he's kind of like, <laughs> fuh, 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 fuh. Yeah, I, I for whatever reason, I'm seeing, I'm like in a, I'm really crouched down. I look almost like I'm in this half crab walk. I don't even know how to put it exactly. I'm, <laughs> I don't know, I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not standing up tall. And we rush over to the loading bay. I give one last look around and sprint over. Pop, 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 pop. 
pretty quiet, you know, making a, even maybe less noise, but going much faster than you guys with my on my tennis shoes and say and stop right by you and say, all right, I'm going to I'm going to take the lead now. I'm going to go forward and start making my way up the ramp towards the exit door or the sort of back entrance door of the space. Cool. Um, I'm going to play complication, I think, on this one. As uh, where you're heading up to that back door, it opens and coming out of it are three other children that have just all the stuff in their arms, coats, uh, D-cell batteries. And I mean, one of them is even carrying like a, a shopping cart or uh, rather a shopping uh, basket, all probably a little bit older, are probably nearer to 14, 13, 14, 15. Uh, so they, or they, we outnumber them, but they seem to be a little bit older, older. than we are. So there's three of them, mm-hmm. but they're older. Like, what's the what's the danger here? That they chase us away, that we're not able to get in there. Okay, sure. So I will roll. Uh-oh. Eee. Okay, so you guys are coming up the ramp behind me and kind of stumble into me because I've stopped short. Spiky hairs! They, one of them drops the bundle and pulls out a knife, says, You gravers! You gravers! And that's, uh, I just brandish my spear at them and I'm shaking. I say, hi, I'm Calvin. Calvin, no, not now. Get out of here, you gravers! This is our spot. No gravers allowed here no more. Oh, we've been getting stuff from here for 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 weeks. Penny, she Penny lunges kind of in front of this great this spiky hair kid with the knife and brings her spear up to kind of block like a, a wild swing. Wild he wasn't swing, really yeah. like she's a little overreactive in this moment, and it catches in the wooden handle, and she goes. Run, you guys, run back to the woods. Definitely that uh, Jacques is sort of almost, they say it at the same time, like, run, Kelvin. I I don't want to go without Penny. Just go. And the guy pulls the knife out and kicks it, kicks the wooden handle, and it snaps where he's like, and kind of knocks Penny back and knocks the wind out of her, and she kind of rolls down the ramp and gets up and grabs Kelvin like at the base or you know, at the upper arm says run run Kelvin run and, they and the just... spiky hairs are just ha, ha, ha. they're sort of like nervous laughing like they're like overly sort of laughing but they're definitely like mocking yeah. laughing and we just get out of here we run back yeah, to the Kelvin woods run. and are disappear into the foliage yeah so for our next scene is going to be very reminiscent of our first scene i think it's just going to be Jacques and i think it's just going to be Kelvin and let's have another person come as well. Maybe a, a younger gal, a younger girl who probably goes by the name. Well, this is, could be Sally. Who's Sally. Sort of the, like, yeah. Well, like Perfect. she's the babysitter. Mm-hmm. She's the babysitter, yeah. So, and that's exactly right. We want Sally to come with us. So the idea here is that uh, Jacques is really into breaking into cars, locked cars Hmm. like that to him is like he loves it because like a blind pack you don't know what's going to be in there it's like the one thing not one thing but one of the main things that really gives him a a thrill is to sort of see what they're going to find in these locked cars and so every so often we go to a, a nearby parking lot where there's just a bunch of locked cars in fact around the super saver department deals store they're obviously large parking lot so we're out going out to a parking lot to like break into these through the window or and however some of, the, some of the highways are parking lots exactly some of the highways are parking lots at this point as well and so that's where we are we're just uh, in a, a nearby parking lot probably a few blocks over from the super sale department store i'm sort of saying well here's the way i like to do it is you take a screwdriver and maybe it's put it in between the two and then you can pop out of the window i mean you have to make noise so watch out make sure no one's around when you're doing it but i, I don't understand can you show me yeah, 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 yeah. Here, look, 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 look. Okay, here, you put your hands on it. Uh-huh. Okay, and then we're going to pull together. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa. Yeah, good job. That's awesome. That was great. Uh, okay, Um. now be careful that you don't cut yourself on the glass, but you have to reach in. Okay. Make sure your arm goes in tall above the glass, in the, sure. but but not too tall so you don't cut it on the, on the top, maybe. And then just reach in and, and you can open. There we go. Okay, let's look in here. All right. What do we got? Well, I, you know... Sally, I, I, I mean, we brought you so you could find stuff for the baby. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a reason you guys looked in this one. It had a, a, a baby car seat. Car seat. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so exactly. there might be, uh, yeah. So the, you guys find it actually like a little diaper bag in the car. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, here you you take this. And what else is in here? Maybe we can find some. Maybe there's something in the trunk. Kelvin's gonna look for supplies, maybe to build another slingshot. He really misses it. Mm. Jacques uh, definitely opens up the like the ashtray and like looks around for any like <laughs> cigarette butts or anything like that. Uh, he even 
presses in like the cigarette lighter to sort of like light up any sort of cigarettes that he's able to find. He just sort of starts puffing there and, and starts to really love to sort of be directing like, yeah, yeah, go in the back, look in, look in the trunk. Maybe there's something in there. Maybe there's some iron or something. Um, Don't worry. We'll be able to go back to the, the, the super steel sales soon. All right. So, so Kelvin gets, crawls into the back and he opens up the sort of compartment where the spare tire is to see if there's any usable material in there. And there's a spare tire, of course. You know what he also finds, I think? A straight up gun, a handgun in a, a small briefcase. Whoa. You know, like a straight up, like someone was storing, like transporting mm-hmm. their firearm in the back of their car. Um, 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 uh, Jacques? What is it, bud? Don't worry. Is it a snake? Uh, no. Spider? No, no, no. Um, it's... And he shows him the gun. Jacques has been slowly taking the cigarette lighter and putting it on places of, on his arm, just burning himself oh. on different places of his arm. And just sort of... <laughs> so Kelvin comes up holding the gun what? and sees this, right? Sees... What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just, I don't know, making some marks. Look Looks kind of cool, like a cheetah. Whoa! I was in the back? Yeah, it was with the spare tire in the back. Penny Where always told you? me to look in the... Pistol in... Pete? <laughs> no, no, I'm just Kelvin. Um... I don't, I don't really know how this works. That's what we need to take. What, we'll show those spiky heroes exactly who owns the Super Saiyan. Yeah, they don't have a gun. Uh, no, they don't. Um, sh- should we give this to Penny? Uh, Penny already has, uh, I, I don't know. It's yours. You found it. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep it then. And he sticks it in the pocket of his, of his big uh, army jacket. Yep. While the two of you have been doing this, Sally saw a minivan a mm. few cars down mm-hmm. with a baby on board, placard or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, suction cup yep. dealie mm-hmm. on the back, and has been peering into the window there. She tries your trick, and it makes a loud crash, which sets off a couple car alarms mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. around there. What is the consequence for failure on this complication? As I look around, where I look around very wary. You could potentially draw some fallen yeah. onto you. Sure could. And we do, in fact. The car alarms are going off and going off, but it's like still. Like we all freeze like yeah. statues. The longest sort of minute goes by as we're sort of looking around. And then I'm like, we, we need to leave. And that's when we see them coming over this embankment. It's like they're just like probably two of them and they just like hurl themselves over the metal divider that's along the side of the highway. They're almost on all fours as they sort of crash to the ground and then rear back up as they're just sprinting towards us, slavering. Their uh, fingernails have basically been torn out, so their hands are all sort of red and raw and uh, they're, they're just coming right. As I guess I so often do. I go, yeah, run, Kelvin, run. Kelvin runs. <laughs> yeah. I say, run, Sally. No. Nah! I like grab a tire iron out of the back of the car. And then I'm like, what am I doing? We're going to bring that gun back here. What are the, what are they doing, John? They're coming around. One sees like Sally and Kelvin sort of darting through cars, heading back, like zigzagging roughly towards, you know, back down, back towards the, the access to head home, right? Back to the Haven. And they're the most active of the two. And so they're almost ignoring you. Mm-hmm. The, they, one climbs up on a car and is vaulting. Yeah. from roof to yeah. roof chasing these little figures running around and these people are and the in, other um, is kind of paused like you know like do do i give chase as well or do i deal with this guy with the tire and iron tire uh, they're like in sort of rags it looks like they're probably wearing like dungarees jeans and maybe like flannel shirts or maybe these are uh, i mean one of them looks like they were yeah exactly <laughs> one of them it looks like they were a jogger actually like they're out for a jog yeah, yeah, when yeah, this yeah. happened and so they're like oh, just like they're in just basically shorts and like not even a shirt anymore just uh, with their very very nice sweet nike running shoes that they still have on and i just start banging the tire iron against the car that i'm by to try and get their attention to draw them away from the younger kids as I, I basically am trying to act as bait to, to sacrifice myself to try and save these kids. Yeah, I think I think the, 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 the gun isn't integrated enough into Kelvin for him to no think way. to use it yet. No way. I think he turns back when he hears the banging. I think he says, I think he says, uh, uh, come on, Jacques, come on. Ah, stupid kid. And I, I'm I'm like so mad that he that, <laughs> that you're not running away right now. I keep hitting cars to try and set off more car alarms to make like more noise, and then I try and hide. 
I like try and hide somewhere basically to try and get away from them. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna throw I'll throw another complication your way. Oh, so you another die roll. So the yeah, you're making a lot more noise, and you guys are hollering, and there was already alarms going, and these these things are kind of screaming now as they they're almost playing they're toying with you a little mm. bit like you're hiding but there are these you know sally's crying clutching this diaper bag stopping every once in a while turning back seeing why aren't you guys following kelvin you're doing what you're doing so these things are are kind of they're they're imminent they're there yeah. threats but i think you're you're starting to hear like thump, 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 as a couple more start just like running from further down the highway along rooftops of the cars yeah and like you hear maniacal laughter oh good um so uh, what are the consequences i guess for this job? <laughs> um i'd say that you potentially could well I, it's not like you're gonna die maybe right? we aren't quite there mm-hmm. i'd say consequences could be that you could get hurt pretty bad right. or be separated from yeah. the group like yeah. yes you may all yeah. get away maybe sally doesn't or yeah, something yeah. you could be you could be end up separated from the group yeah. and not be and they have to find their way home without you oh okay well i think uh, at this point i am going to use my determination die to go ahead and roll another one on top of there uh so we fail which is bad news I guess that the consequence here is that our resident baby expert gets left behind and is eaten by these things. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like I think so, yeah, one of them like the two come up on you and so now you're you're cut off from Kelvin. <laughs> There's two of them chasing Sally down who trips and like diapers spra- sprawl sprawl right everywhere, everywhere and you just see them fall on her yeah. and and we, ru- you we just yeah, rush you, off. what do you yeah. say yeah you, I don't say anything at this point anymore I'm not I'm not even I'm I, what does Kelvin do yeah I think he just he 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 says Sally oh god he's scared he's scared of Jacques but I think I think that he's the older kid, so I think he follows. He follows him. He follows him and leaves her there. All right. Yeah. And you both flee into yeah. the woods or whatever. Yeah. You get away. So yeah. We're on the, the yeah. We're on the road. Four, four of them sort of fall on her. Yeah. And, yeah. and her screams echo in your ears. As Indeed, we won't ever forget them. Oof, that's too trauma <laughs> for you. <laughs> Is that trauma? Oh, is that trauma? Well, you get, oh, yeah. It's like two of those. It is. You're trying. totally right. It is totally trauma for the me. The trauma comes from the failure, not from yeah. witnessing. Right? Correct. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. That's right. Great. But and, the, you yeah, have, the, and you have one so I far. I have one yeah, so far, yeah. I, I'm turning them black yeah, slowly over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's the, there are the two first scenes on all our right. part. So this right. is, you know, <laughs> introducing things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we failed in getting the supplies from the Super Saber. And yep. we failed from g- getting the supplies. So I think the next scene is Kelvin and Penny, in lieu of this slingshot, decided to learn to fire the gun. Um, so he's asked Penny, uh, because she seems so capable, to go out by the by the river and 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 teach him how to teach him how to fire a gun they've set up some some bottles and some old buoys and stuff on the other side of the right. and a couple like cement angels yes yeah <laughs> right a couple awesome. cement angels in there and they are one uh, garden gnome yeah taking turns firing firing the gun kelvin takes a shot misses completely i don't i, I don't think i'm gonna get it well all right this isn't my strong suit either but here let me i think it's like a lot it's a lot about like paying attention and, and being like focused on like your breathing, right? Right. Like don't worry about hitting it. Right. Right. Just lock your arm. Uh huh. Exhale. Uh huh. Aim, and be like just on the trigger. And when your breath's all out, boom, just pull it the rest of the way. Breath's all out. And okay. Boom. And I think he fires and blows the wing off of uh, off of one of the angels. Not a direct hit, but he's absolutely thrilled. Uh, all right. Um. I, I guess I should. Um, we should stop for the day. I, we only have one extra clip, so yeah, we shouldn't. We shouldn't waste the ammo. Um, well, well, do you do you think you you better hold it just because you know you're the one who gets all of our food and stuff? And I I, 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 I know that Jock said that I should be the one to use it, but I'm just I'm just scared that I'm gonna mess everything up again. And and um, you know, 
if Jock if Jock said Jock said you should hold on to it, yeah, you should then you should hold on to it. All right, like yeah, Kelvin, you you will be smart enough to know when to use it or not. Okay, all right, yeah. Don't let Jock have it. Don't let Jock have it. If he 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 told you to keep it, if he asks you to use it or to give it to him, don't tell him that he told you to hold on to it. And so it's your job to hold on to it. Right. Okay? It's my job. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. And the remember the first lesson I showed you this switch the safety. Right. Whenever you aren't shooting, it needs to be on. Okay. Which one is on when it's orange or when it's black? I don't remember either, but. Okay. <laughs> That's when you guys start hearing this like growling coming from the nearby brush. And it's like it, it first sort of uh, starts low yeah. and then it starts to raise, not in volume, but in like breadth as these sort of like starving dogs seem to be sort of like creeping out of the woods around you guys. They seem to have these, these like sort of feral look in their eye. It definitely seems like that, that they have marked the two of you as possible prey. Okay. So what's the consequence if I don't succeed at this? Uh, you will get bit by a dog. Penny's in automatic like get behind me mode. She has her half spear now yeah. and, and half spear <laughs> <laughs> and sort of her whittled sharpened stick that she now carries mm-hmm. is the, that's the other remaining half of her spear. Kelvin, be careful. So Kelvin is going to seeing that they're about to uh, attack. I think Kelvin is going to try and squeeze off. Is going to let out air and try and squeeze off the shot. Oh yeah, I believe in you. The dogs immediately lunge. Kelvin sh- 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 shrieks, drops the gun, and runs behind. Penny. Yeah. So Pe- yeah, and Penny brings up her thing. She she actually it, the one that's biting you still like kind of like, <sighs> on, yeah on your on arm. arm right. She brings her knife into its you know eye yeah. and it it may it bites down a little harder before releasing in its death throat. And the others are upon both of us now as we as I try to keep them off of you and off of myself, just fi- fending them off. Yeah. Okay, uh, 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 clutching my arm, I realized dropping the gun was the wrong thing. Kelvin goes for the gun again to see if he can get it and scare off the other dogs with some ammunition. So he crawls forward, uh, looks uh, on the bank for the, the the gun. He sees it's right there by the edge of the water. Uh, so he he crawls forward and grabs grabs the pistol, turns. Three dogs left. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, think, I, think, I, think, sure, I think. I think. Penny's right. tangling with a couple of them and You're... keeping them from kind of getting around her to you. You're the weaker prey. Right. But there's one sort of old, heavier dog that's a little slower moving, but is like is sees sees the little one as easy easy prey and mm-hmm. kind of is like is limping up to to Kelvin, and he aims square between its eyes, straightens his arm, blows out air squeezes the trigger, and its head just disappears in a spray of blood and brain. Um, and he says, I got one! I got one! Another one, like, has leapt, like, Penny's struggling with one. She gets, like, a clean stab in and yeah. turns to you and says, look out! Because you're you're just kind of like, woohoo! Yeah. Right? As another dog pounces on you, and you both go spinning down. You The gun falls on the embankment, but yeah. you both go rolling down towards the water. Great. Um, so if you fail here... You will be fighting a dog in the water. Hey! All right. <laughs> I am a natural swimmer, so I break free from the dog, dive into the water, and immediately start swimming downstream, uh, well away from this this uh, mangy thing. Uh, and I get clear of the situation. Penny is left with one dog to oh yeah, to, she's to handle. Which, but yeah, by the time you've come back up on the embankment, I'm cleaning and skinning with rapid proficiency. Mm-hmm. S- frighteningly fast at yeah. prepping these dogs. We kind of throwing <laughs> throwing like the, the the dog collars into a pile. And though he's and though he's hurting and he's bleeding and he's scared, Kelvin feels triumph. He feels triumph for the first time in this world. He's killed this dog. He's gotten away from another and this hero has killed three other save the day. You know, Penny has not let him down and she is just awesome, Phil. Uh, so we're going into Act Two. Yep. This is almost a mirror of our scene before. Mm-hmm. It's the three of us and Gregor now again at the edge of the woods in the Safeway. Yep. And this time, Penny's refashioned herself a full spear, and she's got like a second one now. So she's like dual wielding these spears. You've got a gun mm-hmm. armed and ready, Jock. You've got your tire iron still. Yep. Got right? the tire iron. Gregor is like rocking a gravedigger shovel. Yeah, I, his, well, and so now ti- we're coming in arms. The tire iron I've actually uh, used my wallet chain to affix, so I almost have like this chain whip nice. on this tire iron. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm scratching in the ground. I've drawn a square that says this is this is the safe way, all right? This is that ramp that we tried to get up before when the spiky air kids stopped us. I've been watching them the past couple days. They've been doing supply runs. They don't go through the woods, though. They've got a cart and some bikes that they pull the cart on. So they load up right over here. And I, she points to, like, this area of dumpsters that they that are kind of, like, they wall off a little bit from sight. And, and, and so right now, like, they're going to be... They're going to be doing one of their runs, their supply runs. The best place to hit them is probably when they go into the store after they've loaded up the cart part way. That's when we're going to hit the, the one guard on the cart. Okay. All right? Okay. That's what we got to do. So now we're, and I've kind of drawn along how we're going to like skirt along the edge of the woods till we see that dumpster. And now now we start playing. But like I, I say, I'm going to go ahead and kind of come like from the back of it. I'm going to need one of you guys to make some noise and call them out. And then that's when we're just going to have to jump on them. You know, that's my specialty, you have spear. Yeah, don't. We don't have to kill him, but just be careful. If it comes to us or him, you know, do what we got to do, I guess. We need to, we need what they have. We The dogs have been running out. You can't find as many of them anymore. Shh, shh, look, look. And we see two figures kind of like scurrying into the store. One looks back as they pull the door closed behind. Now's the time. Let's go. And Come we on, start Gary. like working our way to the edges. Uh, we get up closer to the dumpster. You can just kind of see this one kid's head like from in the screen of dumpsters. And I again signal and so I go around, and you, see, and you I, lose sight of Penny. I, like, wait, like, a 10 count, like, three. And as I get the 10, I stand up, and I say, hey, don't I know you from school? And that's when the spiky-haired kid pulls out, like, a baseball bat <laughs> with some nails. Who, who's there? And I say, uh, just your friendly neighborhood graver. I thought you might want to trade, as I show him my tire iron. You're gravers? Yeah, this is our territory. Didn't you know that? Gravers are scrapers. You're nothing. You're vultures. This is our turf. We own this spot. He reaches for a gym whistle that he has Ooh. around his neck, and uh, he and starts to bring it to his mouth. And yes. that's just as Penny is coming up over the edge of the of the dumpster. She's gonna. That's a great complication. She'll. She, she's coming up over the edge of the dumpster, mm-hmm. like she's climbed on top of it, mm-hmm. and is like looking down as as the whistle comes up to his mouth. Oof. All right. So her eyes are wide as he brings the whistle up to his lips. And he blows. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. not gonna just frighten Tweet. everyone's ears with a uh, whistle, but a a tweet, a tweeting trill. And she leaps on him, and they go tumbling in onto the ground. The, the whistling stops, but the noise has been made. And she she rises up, and as Jacques is running over to the the bicycle, and seems like he's about to just get on it. Like, there and, and like no, we'll need we'll need two people bicycle like biking. Just wait, there are gonna be more of them. Okay. Kelvin runs behind the dumpster with the gun out. Yeah, the the kid on the ground is struggling. He's reaching for his bat, like it's been sort of knocked out of his hands by Penny. She just kind of like smacks his head on the tarmac, but is struggling to keep him down. And and now he's go reaching whistle again. And we start to hear like the patter of other Gregor, Gregor, get him. Jacques will run to one side, I guess, of the doors. Uh, to try and hide um, himself so they don't see him as they're right. going to be pouring out of here. Yeah, so Gregor actually comes in and, like, to everyone's horror, brings the spade down, <laughs> like, <laughs> smack <laughs> this kid's head. Ugh. And it sticks there. It, he spasms and the bat sort of rolls where he had just held it. And Penny's spattered, and she she gets up horrified and, and backs away. Gregor, what'd you do? Kelvin, don't look. Jacques seems to like not be as affected as the others. His eyes are more of a flat as he's w- w- seeing this. Kelvin, don't look. As he's just uh, she's, uh, she's like lost. covering his eyes and like starting to like retch. Yeah, watching. a pool of urine is 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 puddling beneath uh, beneath Kelvin's pants. And Gregor is like blubbering. He's like confused. He doesn't really. He didn't get what he was doing, and now he's like looking at everyone's reactions and is like also just kind of like shocked down. And that is when two other kids come. Guy, the the kid again with the knives. Gravers, what'd you do to Billy? And I, I think that's exactly when Jock just snaps out of his reverie, remembering the splatter of blood from his own family member's death on his face, and just swings his tire iron from the hidden place to try and catch this kid right in the stomach. Mm, yeah, so you'd knock the wind out of Gah! the kid, uh, the spiky-haired kid, the, with the presumed leader of this mm. band. Knife wielder. Yeah, and the the other guy drops his arm of supplies 
and just because of your proximity doesn't go for any weapon just starts to grapple yeah, you and point. that's when penny like kind of breaks out of her thing and says, kelvin just you and gregor get on the bikes and she kind of picks up her spear picks up the bat and starts going for the spiky haired knife wielding kid leave us leave us alone it was an accident kelvin doesn't want to go i think that he as a complication Kelvin runs forward because he's, his dad was a doctor. He runs forward to try and wake up the dead, um, oh, Billy, the, the, the dead, oh, yeah, yeah, guy, and obviously the complications yeah. that puts him in great danger. Jacques is struggling with this guy, and the guys are like, "The only, like, the only good gravers are in the ground. We're gonna put you all in the ground." Jacques is saying, "Not if I, not if I bite your throat out first. <laughs> yeah, Penny's doesn't know which. Like she's pulled in three different directions at least right now. Gregor is like finally stumbling towards the bike. The knife wielding kid, would you say Liam? Liam, yeah, yeah. he's got was sort of knocked the wind out of him, was yeah. on the ground, but he's sort of recovering. He's starting to get up and and is rage filled looking at Kelvin messing with the dead Billy and like grits his teeth and you know, almost ravening unto himself, starts going towards Billy and Jacques is going kind of nuts and is also in trouble. And so she, she's pulled in multiple different, so directions. different directions. And she's going to use her determination Ooh. here. So we'll see. She engages the mechanism. She's like, she follows the same advice she gave Kelvin before. She takes a breath and lets her muscles take over and throws one spear. And Such a bad <laughs> And it catches the, the kid that you're wrestling Ooh. with. Ugh. Just like it, it doesn't pierce, it just yeah. like hits his shoulder yeah. blade. Yeah. I mean, we're kids, it's, it hurts. Yeah, yeah. Like hell, it glances off the bone, slices him real good, and he just starts bleeding. And he's like, hell! And, and turns to see her bring the bat down on the knife wielding kid to Ooh. to just knock him out cold before yeah, and, as and his tear out some skin I'm sure too gun, yeah, nails little, on and everything called the one kid just starts padding away yeah the, I sort of throw him off me and he and he's, he sort of starts padding I reach down and like touch the kid who I just hit with the bat and he's breathing it's he's just knocked out I say help me get him help me get him on the cart Kel, sorry Kelvin we, get, put those we can't we can't take him back to the cemetery we are. Kelvin, get get those supplies. Help you and Gregor get those supplies on the bike. We're gonna, and then you guys get in the cart too. This is a bad idea. We can't take him back there. Jock, we have to take care of him. He's hurt. He would have stabbed us with those knives. It was all an accident. It all it all just happened too fast. Uh, Kelvin goes, uh, starts grabbing the supplies. He grabs the whistle and puts it around his neck. Uh, and he and he immediately starts loading the supplies in the cart. Yeah, and and we we bike off with just sort of little little tidbits m- moments of the scene left. The like yeah. spear that I had like left behind with some blood on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a, a dead Billy. Dead Billy's with a there. Spade in his head, yeah. mm-hmm. laying there, and and mm-hmm. you know off we go. Off we, off go. we bike. Yeah, yeah. And some yeah, some blood on the ground too, where yeah. he's knocked um, out. But so we... that's gonna that's gonna trigger a downfall. <laughs> Uh, This scene is the next day. A little bit of time has passed. It is myself and uh, some other random kids. It isn't either of us or the other protagonists. Uh, No Penny, no Kelvin. And we're, we're digging the trench. That is going to be our shelter. That is going to be our tornado shelter. We mm. were digging it. That was... You're using the backhoe? Yeah. I mean, we're using the backhoe. We're using shovels, spades. We're, we're sort of like, we're, we're trying to find the perfect spot for it. And we're sort of talking about it and how we think it might look. I'm obviously in charge. I'm the oldest. Uh, I also know how. So I'm in the backhoe. Exactly. So I'm sort of like digging a bit. Jose and Amy are there. Uh, and I'm sort of saying, I, don't, I, I mean, what are we going to do with the prisoner? What do you guys think we should do? I mean, maybe we can learn things from him. He probably knows a lot about what's going on out there. I don't know why we took a prisoner. I don't think it's a good idea. You and me both. But now we have him. I mean, we can't change it. Maybe we should just get rid of him. No, he's he's another like big kid. He could be helpful. As he, she digs. He is big. He's he. I think he's older than 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 Penny and me. Yeah, we saw what happened to the big kids. They turn bad, just like everyone else. That's yeah, right. he might turn bad. But they they come from a, maybe he, if we make friends with them, we can go to to their place. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if we can make friends with anyone anymore. There's we don't know. We can't. We don't know what they they call us out there. They say that we're scavengers. That we're scrapers. They think that we think that we're not. That we can't protect ourselves and can't. That the they think that the super sales is all theirs and it's not. Well, we scared them off, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I think so. Yeah. So it's ours. Yeah. 
They know not to come back. We got one of them. We did get one of them. Gregor got one of them. But I don't think we should tell him about about the tornado shelter. Let's not talk about that in front of a spike hair. Should we wake him up? I don't know. I, I think that, that Gregor and, and, and Penny are watching him. Okay. But we can maybe. I'm sure that we're all going to talk with him soon whenever he wakes up. All right. Well, I'm going to get this backhoe going. It's sort of like driving a car, and I, I, I had a few lessons of driving. So you guys just watch out. Okay. I'm going to drive it up a little bit closer. So of turn it on we have put enough gas in it and i'm just sort of like very slowly trying to figure out this sort of clutch sort of uh transmission on this backhoe as we're sort of driving it closer to where we're going to be um excavating uh we sort of have laid out like little stones in the the area that sort of per- makes a perimeter around where we're going to be digging uh i'm like well you guys should learn come here we can try it together okay yeah okay okay so I think that this one makes it go forward. And so I move this lever and indeed the sort of the arm starts to yeah. sort of descend. And it scoops like real good. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm so, okay, you guys try it now. And I sort of move move out of the way. Okay, well, why, why don't, what if I sit in the bucket and you make it lift me up? Okay. <laughs> no. Um... That sounds fun. Do it. All right. So, all right. So, 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 yeah. So, Jose uh, gets in the bucket. (laughs) So, yeah, these like kids are playing with operating heavy machinery. Operating heavy machinery. (laughs) What are the consequences of this? Oh, (laughs) but we're good. (laughs) A good time is had by all. (laughs) I think, too. Yeah, you like. It's kind we're of laughing. Like a, we're it's like, like a fun montage, exactly. a lot of digging. Yeah. We're laughing. We're actually accomplishing something. There's a point where you're almost done. You're pretty far along. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jose is like drinking some water. Like we've kind of gotten a mm-hmm. bucket. He's like coming back with that bucket and uh-huh. like drinking out of a ladle. Amy is just like mopping her forehead. She's got a spade out and you're scooping up like one big thing of dirt. Yeah. You have to dump it <laughs> and you go back to scoop again and that's when like basically you've kind of dug near the edge of an existing grave yes. and a coffin yes. slips out uh, into this pit mm-hmm. but it's also beneath Amy and so she's starting to slide, slide. into the pit yeah. as well uh, while your while your backhoe is like coming, <laughs> coming down coming down oh god <laughs> and i yell out Amy no <laughs> 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 People. Uh, okay, so what's the consequences here, John? Is she buried alive? Is she? Oh, me? Okay. Yeah, I, 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 terrible I, things. Terrible things These... happen. So the dirt just comes out from underneath her. It's like one of the walls, basically, of sort of the existing sort of hole begins to sort of collapse and slide in. And so she slides down this sort of like dirt slide, mud slide into the bottom of this now eight foot deep like trench that we've been sort of digging here. There is a, a, a coffin that's there that, I mean, is uh, spilling open. And she basically finds herself face to face with a, you know, semi-decomposed corpse. Uh, I mean, it, she is like on top of this corpse, yeah. this dead body. She's screaming. Traumatized. And that's muffled as the dirt covers her. Indeed. And you have mere moments Indeed. Yeah. And so th- Jose drops his bucket and comes running. Yeah, he yeah. does. But that being said, yeah, I just sort of like freeze for a second in fear and then just go into action as I uh, rush down right right into the pit. Like I, I rush down the collapsing side. I get in there. I don't even care if I'm going to get buried. And I'm just like trying to find her and trying to, to pull her out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you do. I think you so too. Do. She's like almost suffocating. Like she's like heaving for breath. Yeah. There's the stench of death is around us, this corpse, this moldering corpse. And totally shell-shocked. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. just three of you are traumatized. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And sort of we we pull we we pull out uh, of, of the pit. We finally are able to get out. And there's just this feeling amongst the three of us that, like, maybe we shouldn't build this here. Or maybe this is a bad place to this. Or maybe we're never going to come back here again to right. work on this. Plus, you it, look back at this pit that you've spent the day digging. Yeah. It's like, it's like half, half in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like there's no sound engineering here at all we're just literally just digging a hole in the ground trying to figure out figure it out okay final scene act two all right so it is not the big one but a storm has come a a small tornado has hit or is coming is incoming and so the the, every everyone is together in the chapel the main sort of the center of uh the cemetery the little kids are looking towards the leaders, the older kids, to 
you know, do we do we stay in the chapel? Do we split up and go to different mausoleums? Kelvin is taking his fish out of its glass bowl, putting it back into its plastic bag, and saying, um, "All right, well, we we gotta we gotta we gotta get underground." Uh, I, I I I know Dad would 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 say when there was a storm coming, we have to get underground. So. I, I, I think we should do that, guys. Jacques is using one of the knives that they took off of Liam's spiky hair to sort of like clean his fingernails. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he he seems oddly withdrawn. There's no place we can go. There's no, there's no underground anywhere. There's no place. Where where where, where will we go? Sure, sure there is. We could go in the mausoleum. We we. We, the, the the one that looks like a pyramid, it, 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 that, that seems big enough, right, Penny? Yeah, Penny. Penny's just kind of like holding a pretty like thousand yard stare, Gregor, and just kind of petting his head and looking at a like near her bound is Liam, the spiky hair kid. She's just she's not really in the conversation. She's she's off somewhere else. Uh, uh, okay. Um. Well, there, there's no uh, there's nowhere we go. It's like a trap. A trap. Well, well, I, well, well. I say we should go underground. So, um, uh, uh, little kids, uh, uh, we need you to 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 gather up our tools, and we're gonna we're gonna cross the cemetery, and we're gonna go to the the the, the big pyramid shaped one. Do you, do you know which one that is, Jose? Like, yeah, yeah, I know that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll I'll, get, I'll start getting some of the stuff together. Kelvin scurries over to, to to Penny and says, "Um, I'm really scared. I, 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 am I doing the right thing?" Oh, hey, yeah, Kelvin. Sorry. Yeah, you're fine. All you're. That's a great idea. Here, take you guys here. We all hear Amy bursting out into tears, like just full on panic mode, losing it at this point, like just breakdown, just full. Break. Okay, so Kelvin tries to emulate the the bedside manner of his father and to calm his own fears. Yeah, and that's really the problem here is that this fear will catch on. Right, right, absolutely. So, so he says, um, Amy, I know you're scared, but we're going to be okay. The pyramid is strong, and this is just a little tornado. I can't go. I can't go underground. I can't. Amy, I can't go underground. Amy, you can. You can. We've got water, and we've got some dog meat. We're going to be okay. No. Can't do it. I can't go underground. Can't go underground. All right. Um, do you remember uh, your parents, Amy? Do you remember? Do they ever sing you a song? Um, do Did they ever do something special when you were scared? My dad. I don't. Yeah. He used to. He he used to sing to me. And then when my when my other dad came home, if I was still up, then they would both sing. Okay. Um. Do you have a favorite song? Um. I don't. I don't remember them. Okay. Well, th- there's. There's one that um there's one that my mom used to sing to me when I was um going to sleep and um I'm going to I'm going to sing it to you now and he starts to sing the hush little baby song. No. And it does not oh, calm her by down. one. <laughs> so she's yeah, she Amy's just rocking back and forth and this that's when Liam just starts laughing and says, "You're all going to die." Huh? You're going to bury yourselves, Gravers? Huh? Look at this one. This one's afraid to even go in a uh, coffin. Shut up. He just starts laughing louder and louder. We are not going to die. Um, Amy, Amy's like looking around at the walls and even this this like confining, like flickering candlelight that That's you like, have going on. Boom outside. It's just a storm, like thunder, lightning, like every, wind. Yeah, that boom. Every Every kid like under, you know, Gregor and under just starts the baby's bawling. Amy's screaming and starts running for the door and and actually bursts, just runs outside into this like whipping rain. We interrupt our story here and we'll resume in our next community. I was one of your players, John Holt. You can find me on Twitter at Laura Joho and on Instagram at board underscore ghost. You can find my media review podcast at newdiushow.com and my book club podcast at woundandstab.com. Ken, where can people find you? You can find me, board ghosts, uh, you know, all over the interwebs. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram at Burling's Beard, B-E-R-L-I-N-G-S, Beard. I'm a concierge dungeon master in the New York City area. Please find me and hire me to run your games. Would love to do that with you. All right. And Chris, where can people find you? Uh, well, you can find uh, 
find me around the neighborhood of Jackson Heights, Queens, or uh, you can see me most recently in episode one of Jessica Jones. You can attempt to pierce the veil and contact us at Board Ghost World on Twitter. You can learn more about the players and engines in our story by visiting BoardGhost.com. Shout out through the ether of your desires we can fulfill. You can go to our Patreon if you want to get access to both halves of an episode early, so you can hear the whole episode before everybody else. You can get access to some of the art that we make for the show in wallpaper formats, and you can get access to exclusive how to play videos. We should have just put up one for Skeletons. Yeah, great Skeletons. Game. Skeletons, uh, great game. To go with our latest playthrough of that. And yeah, so definitely go check out our Patreon. We'd really appreciate our patrons, and it helps us, you know, access more games and keep kind of covering the costs here. And we love to have collaboration. If you aren't in a place to collaborate financially, totally cool. Do help us out by going out and spreading the word. Let people know about the show. Share it around on socials. Tell people about it. If you're in a car with somebody, force them to listen. All kinds of good ways to, <laughs> to make people watch or listen to this show. So you can leave reviews and comments on iTunes, your preferred listening portal. Take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest episodes. We'd like to thank Pat Couples for our theme song and interlude music. You can find more about Pat at patcouples.tumblr.com or on his band's website, hotelsandhighways.com. If you're not alone in the void, share our stories. The more they are consumed, the truer they become. Oh